So we've just arrived in Kyoto after getting the bullet train down from Okawawa. Um, it was about, it was like 11,700 yen, which is like 80 quid essentially to come down here. Uh, it took us about two and a half hours and then like a 20 minute walk from the train station to the hotel. But this is the hotel room. Fridge, stuff, bottled water. Here's Sorry, the basic toilet, kind of similar to the last one that we had. But a huge bed and two pillows, which we haven't had yet. And a little seat, table, mirror. This was a total of 256 euros uh, plus the tax, so 270 euros for six nights. So yeah, as I showed you, dude, that was just our room in the hotel. But let me just show you the lobby because it's it's uh, yeah pretty cool. It's just all the gaming stuff. And there's something going on over there, a woman chasing a man down the street trying to give him this change. Um, yeah, so look, I'll show you what it's like. It's pretty cool. Gaming, gaming. Lots of games, Xbox, old stuff. Um, the original Xbox games. And another type of game, old stuff, retro gaming. So the stuff here, and you've got more retro games, and from the thing up, whatever it is, whatever little prize to be. Another kind of kids game, printers, all that sort of stuff. And then come in here, so we on the wall, and you have the bar area, which has all of these. Gaming PCs with different games on them. Absolutely nuts. Like, I've never seen anything like it in a hotel. Yeah, that's the downstairs of our hotel. Um, yeah, we're here for six nights. And yeah, that's it. This, this thing that moves around, skateboard, and guitar on it. Well, yeah, we're going across to the shop now. Across the road, I'm gonna pick up some cans. So we are meeting uh, with Jar and Tim uh, later on. So not yeah, so now is technically our third day, kind of here, our second night. Yesterday was a complete write off, everyone just drank away too much. Um, basically, kind of did nothing. We went out to the bamboo forest, it was pitch black and pretty creepy and no one around. So today we're kind of relatively early and we're gonna just hit up a lot of the tourist stuff today. So you'll be able to see a lot of what Kyoto is like. Um, and yeah, so we're gonna go to the famous shrine with all the hundreds of doors first, meant to be extremely busy. Uh, hit up the main area, the Gion district. And yeah, then we're gonna be doing a samurai lesson, which will be pretty funny. And uh, yeah, we're gonna hit up a food market as well and just get some random bits. So yeah, hopefully it's gonna be a good day and see lots of the touristy kind of stuff instead of just drinking the shit out of it. As you can see, the crowds are starting to gather around here now. Getting very busy. Yeah, it is very, very busy. It is cool here. Actually, look at it on the like on the video. It looks fucking like better. <laughs> Different kind of stuff. 
Plenty of road with no people on it. Oh, there's wrong. There is people. <laughs> so yeah, this is um, the Hushimi Shrine at Mount Hanari. Um, I think we're going to walk up to the top of it, but it's kind of similar enough stuff, so it doesn't really make great content. This is just kind of what it is. <laughs> um, but yeah, hopefully there's a viewpoint at the, at the top or something, at least. Yeah, it's going out. Right. So that's basically it for here. We're gonna go down to the Nishini food market and just try to eat as much strange food as we possibly can. Um, yeah, we didn't go to the top. It was just way too hot. You're pumping sweat. Um, this is not enjoyable. Um, even if you come in the morning, humidity is going to be really, really high. So I don't know what's better, being a bit hot or being humid because you're just you're sweating like crazy all the time. But yeah, seriously, we're going to end it here for this area. I'm going to go down to the food market. It was like mostly kind of deep. Making cake. So we've arrived at kind of the start of the market. Um, loads of different kind of shops here, not just food. So yeah, it's going to be interesting. I'm going to get some weird kind of food that I've never seen before. I'm going to try and eat as much strange stuff as I possibly can. Uh, for just for the time that we're in here and just grab some lunch and then head down to the Gion district. Very, very big. These kind of streets and Busier again as you go into the food. These grapes are expensive. Squid. Can we get one in? Squid and scallops being made over there. Blow torching them as well. Unreal. Good thing, not bad. Difficult to eat. Pretty tough. But anyway, on to the next thing. Order some fish balls. Five. Fifty yen for some fish balls. So yeah, looking forward to them. This is it. Fish balls, octopus, fish and uh, edible. Little plate, that's on. So yeah, let's have it. Mm. Hot. <laughs> but really good. <laughs> Duck skewer. Two hundred yen. Very <laughs> really good. Some cream cheese ice cream and a bottle of water for five hundred twenty yen. And yeah, I'm gonna try what this how this is because I don't know what cream cheese ice cream is supposed to be at all. So yeah, let's see how what this tastes like. It tastes like cream cheese. Cool with this thing. Whatever it is. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah. Okay, end our time here at the market. I'm gonna go do our samurai stuff. So yeah, we've arrived at the samurai place. We're gonna go in and do our lesson. So yeah, this is the entrance to it. Thank <laughs> you. 
Kasing ko kapain ko. Raise up, so swing, hoop. <laughs> One more raise up, so swing, hoop. <laughs> Step back, tsuki form, say tsuki. <laughs> One more try again, please. Step back, take a step, tsuki. <laughs> raise up, so so together, hoop. <laughs> Chiburi. Please put in your salt. Siren cease. Wow! <laughs> Great! So that was our little samurai experience. Pretty funny, um, very enjoyable thing to do. It wasn't too expensive either, it was like 45 euro for the hour. <laughs> Definitely recommend doing that, it's uh, something you'll never ever do again or something that you completely different. So yeah, I highly do recommend doing that, it was pretty fun and hilarious, especially in a group. Yeah, this is it. This is good. And you... We're now in the Gion district, famous area where it's all the old kind of houses and whatever. It's all around this area. Yeah. Let's see what it's like.
some sort of temple. Little pond over there. What if I ask for something I want here now? I have no idea. More shrines. A lot of these everywhere here. Just walking down the street and you'll find an awful lot of them. But yeah, uh, this area is a bit strange, for the most part. Uh, <laughs> do we know? Aha! Uh -huh. Yeah, it's just like... So we're apparently at the uh, nicest street in Kyoto, but uh, it's extremely busy for the people. I don't think you really get to see a good image of it. Anyway, let's, let's show it. This is the thing we've, uh, I've noticed with Kyoto, it's extremely busy with tourists. In Tokyo you barely run into anyone that's a tourist, because obviously cause it's so big. But here they're kind of condensed um, into all the main areas, all the main attractions that are here. That they're just full of tourists. Um, and it's quite expensive in these areas, like for food. Like you're getting loads of like selections of different things, but it seems double the price, but you can get it as downtown or something like that. So yeah, look, I'll just show you around the street, but after that, the guys are heading home tomorrow, so um, we're just gonna get some food, and yeah, then me and Laura are here for another couple of days, and we're gonna go to Anson's, that kind of stuff, and uh, yeah, I hope we will show you that in a later video. Oh, well, no, later in this video, because I'm doing one city, one video, because that makes more sense. It's a nice street, but extremely busy. Hmm. Yeah, this is what is at the top of this street, which is look, eh? it's pretty impressive. So we're gonna go up and have a look. And then all the people down there. Oh yeah, good view. Different from far away, if you go close up. They don't know all this is up here. So yeah, that's kind of cool, but it is just packed with people. Hmm. I'm not really sure what they are, but uh, sins, I think. We, we pay 400 yen to come into this park. This is what? Just over like 250. But, uh, yeah, whatever this is all about, not too sure. Two bits, simply kind of stuff. Yeah, it's like a few dogs, but yeah. And people doing their sins. And yeah, not really. Don't worry, you understand what's going on here. A little water pond down there. Yeah, yeah I'm gonna end this segment as well. Um, just going up the street. Um, look, it's just kind of a bit of a touristy attraction shrine at the top of one of the most famous streets here. Um, it's very good to come and see. Maybe come when it's like quieter or very early in the morning. Uh, probably the time to come if you really want to get the best experience. But uh, yeah, do come up here if you do like that kind of stuff and look at the street. Do come in the morning because we came at the complete wrong time, uh, to be honest, because it's just way too busy. So, yeah, look, I'll see you tomorrow when we're doing something else. I think we're going to an answer. What's up? So, today we are going to Bamboo Forest in the light because we went there um, basically at night time, which is kind of pointless because you couldn't see anything. But we thought it was going to be lit up because some images on 
Google says that it is. Um, but it's very, very hot today. If you're wondering what this white thing is, this woman gave it to us to cool us down. But um, yeah, so we're gonna go see what it's like, but it's extremely busy around here. So I'm expecting it just to be absolutely packed. And uh, the Japanese festival of Oban is coming up. So I think a lot of people are off uh, from like this evening onwards. Uh, this is like a massive public holiday here in Japan, like so. Yeah, look, let's go see what it's like during the day. I imagine this is going to be just as busy as things I showed you yesterday. There's a guy there, um, basically pulling people around with his feet. A little cart, like a horse and cart, but there's a man doing it. I don't know how he's doing it. It's like 38 degrees and humidity's through the roof, like, not good. Cool landscape of brown here. Got the mark, got the, all of the mountains and stuff, and a few shrines here as well. So, yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, another temple up there. As well. Kind of buildings. There's so many of them here, it's just a bit overwhelming, to be honest. Statues of Buddha like looking people. Loads them. Kind of strange. Yeah, I tell. <laughs> they buy a nice little riverbed. Super splendid forest. This wasn't here when we came here, in the middle of the night. It's very nice and like peaceful and around here. But I'd say as soon as you get to the bamboo forest, it's going to all change. So, we've actually come the way of like the main park area, and the bamboo grove is actually just like a section of the park. So, we've got a bit of walking to do to get to the bamboo part of it. Nice park to come in. Too, uh, not very busy. But uh, I just kind of saw ahead into the bamboo forest. It's uh, very busy. So, yeah, I'll show you what it's like in the bamboo forest. This is just the start of it, not the main kind of grove. One thing is it's very deep. Pretty tall. I said they're like 10. They're also hollow. <laughs> it's not as busy as yesterday's crowds on the streets, but. Yeah, there's still a good few people around. Especially when we came here at night and there was just nobody around. Yeah, look, that's just kind of it, really. It's uh, not that big. Um, you kind of walk through it pretty quickly. I do get why sort of a tourist attraction, but... Yeah, it's cool. It's cool. It's not... It's free. It's not expensive to come out here, so... If you like forests, something kind of different, then, yeah, do. But, me personally, don't really get it. <laughs> So yeah, now 
that's just basically the end of our, end of our time here in the park. I'm going to go back into the city and try out one of the udon noodle uh, chains. Uh, we try to avoid the chains most possible for eating, um, other than Kokoi Ichibanga because we love curry. And uh, we've gone there like three times already. But uh, yeah, we're going to go to this udon noodle chain and yeah, see what it's like. Um, it's meant to be kind of just cheap and cheerful and pretty tasty. So yeah, let's go and see what it, what it is like. It's over an hour away from here as well. So we're walking and trains and stuff. So yeah, let's see. This is the yeah, udon noodle chain. Okay, it's gonna be good. Tomorrow prawns and uh, some noodles, but we didn't realize that they're actually cold. So yeah, conclusion is Kokuyu Chibana is better because I don't know, it's hot. We ordered cold noodles. I think we just didn't know what we were we were getting. I thought it was cheap. It's only one thousand one hundred for the noodles and two tempura prawns. Like so, it's about what eight euros something like that. So yeah, that was our conclusion. I think Kolki Ichibanya is the best chain so far. Anyway. So guys, it's the next day and we just kind of finished up after the noodles and it wasn't really doing much else, but now we're at the Kinakarju Ji Temple, which is a Buddhist temple on the outskirts of uh, Kyoto, which is like a golden temple, which is gonna be pretty cool. Um, we got out here, it's like one o'clock. It's pretty busy around here. It's a very popular destination to go to. Um, yeah, we're gonna go and just see kind of what it's about. Anyway, it's extremely hot today again. It's like 37, 38 degrees. So, yeah, look, hopefully this is uh, worth coming out here. I think there's a small fee to go in here. Maybe like 500 yen, something like that. But yeah, considering most of here is free. You don't mind paying it. This is just the immediate entrance as you come in. And then we'll get a big view of this golden Buddha temple, which is uh, pretty cool and the setting is awesome just around the corner. The water is very stale. But algae in that. But anyway, the whole setting here and the temple. It's probably the best one that we've been to here. It's very, very cool. There's I'm just throwing money into a coin thing. Pretty funny. So yeah, that was the Buddhist temple on the outskirts of Kyoto. Um, very, very good. Definitely worth going to see. Oh, I nearly fell over. Um, definitely worth going to see, but it is extremely busy. Uh, same as everything here, every attraction is just really, really busy. I don't know if you come a bit earlier than us, will it be less busy? Probably, but um, yeah, it's something that we're just not very good at getting up early, so we're always coming at peak times. So yeah, definitely do come though, because it is probably the nicest one that we've seen so far here in Japan, the nicest kind of little temple area. Um, so yeah, definitely do recommend it. I'll put my camera away and we're gonna move to the next attraction. So yeah, we just reached Nijo Castle, 
um, having all the problems of overheating, like my phone overheated and also now my camera potentially could overheat as well. Um, so yeah, like we'll see how far we can get on with this. So the 1300 yen to come in here is 850s, depending around that. Um, look, this is the most expensive attraction we pay for, and it's only yeah, eight euros, 850. And yeah, hopefully it's pretty good. It's kind of like a moated castle, which is pretty cool. And yeah, it's gonna go up to the map now. See where to go. This is definitely the least packed tourist thing that I've seen here in Kyoto. So yeah, do definitely come here if you like castles and stuff because it's pretty nice. Pretty nice. So yeah, so that building there is, you can bring your camera in. Uh, there's no filming or pictures inside, but it's just like a tour of uh, the old kind of emperor's palace, which is uh, yeah, definitely worth doing while walking around here because it's, yeah, it's, very, it's very, very cool. It's huge. Um, yeah, let's definitely do that if you come into this, into uh, Nije Castle. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. The outside of the palace, which you can bring your camera in, just there. Ooh, big fish in there, huge fish. The gardens, who have heard it here. So it's kind of the main attractions of this castle. You easily spend an hour, 45 minutes here, and maybe even longer. But it is like 38 degrees that we're here at the moment. So we're just probably gonna head for the, the exit really and just find some shade and get a drink because it is tough going. But uh, definitely do come to the castle. At least crowded and uh, it's very, very nice. A lot of history to be seen here too. So yeah, definitely do recommend the Niji Castle. Maybe my favorite really because of the crowd situation. Yeah, so Laura wanted to come to a dog cafe, so here we are. Gonna actually go to the Imperial Palace tomorrow because it's just so hot outside. Um, we need to just have a break, freshen up, go back to the hotel and go at it again tomorrow because it's been a lot of time in direct sunlight today. Yeah, right, so it's the next day and I was going to the Imperial Palace, uh, just going on my own, but I cycled up here. About eight kilometers in 30 degree heat and I am sweating bollocks. Hence why I'm wearing the same clothes because I'm just gonna get more clothes absolutely filthy and just gonna do a wash once I get back. But just for the plan for today, just gonna get this done, get filmed, and then later we're just gonna go to Nansen and then just get food, like so and things I can't really film. So this is probably gonna be the last site that I do see here in Kyoto in this video. I'm not sure how much today people know that uh, this used to actually be the capital. Um, it was only moved to Tokyo in the 1800s, like so. This used to be the home of the emperor. So, so yeah, you just gotta get a little, gotta get a little badge to wear, walking around. I think it's like 500 yen 
entrance as well. So, yeah, let's see what it's like here. It's quite different from the one yesterday, uh, the Niji Castle. Um, I thought it was a bit better. There's a bit more, more to it because it was like a more defensible kind of castle. Um, this one, you can tell, it was like more of a residential sort of thing. Like the walls not as high. It's not as much defensive stuff, but. You can see that it was quite a lush place to live where the emperor was compared to some of the other things that you can see here. Um, yeah, it's very nice all the same. I think it's free, not actually gonna cost 500 yen. The bridges are pretty cool going over the garden, but again, a lot of stale water. Very green. And that is essentially it. Um, it's not too long. See, so you can spend a lot longer looking at stuff than I did. But I'm out of time limit because I have to the bike that I came here. I only have two hours and about 40 minutes away, so I only spend about 40 minutes here. And I need to get a drink. Because it is hot, hot, hot. It's grand actually cycling. But, uh, Walking around is larder. This is a breeze when you're cycling. This park is absolutely massive. You could spend ages exploring it, but at peak heat like this, obviously because I'm on time limit, I can't. But if it's a bit colder, it's definitely worth uh, coming around and having a look around here because there's a lot to see and it's just another little escape from the city life but you're gonna hop on the bike and head back and get myself sorted because we're on the move tomorrow and just do the last few things we want to do here so yeah this is the, the end of our time in Kyoto and now we're gonna be moving to Osaka in the morning where apparently a typhoon is waiting for us on Tuesday but 
Kyoto as a whole, like, it's been very, very good. It's a very different change of pace from Tokyo. Uh, like, it's way quieter. It's not as kind of hectic, but it's way more set up for tourism. You'll run into tourists everywhere. To Tokyo, like, because there's so many people, like, it's why you're not running into tourists as much. But um, it's just, it's different. Overall, personally, I've probably just preferred Tokyo. It's because we were nearly mixing with more like Japanese and you weren't kind of seeing tourists everywhere. But I think it's just because it was so big. Um, but yeah, so we're just going to finish our time here by just going to an onsen and then we're going to grab our ramen as well. And then yeah, we're going to head down to Osaka around 12 o'clock tomorrow and yeah, see how we get on there. And hopefully this, this typhoon that they're t talking about isn't that bad. And I'll see you in the next video, which will be based just on Osaka.